Pakistan Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif has landed in Beijing. This is his first visit to China after becoming the Prime Minister of Pakistan. And this is also uh, the first visit by a dignitary to China to meet Xi Jinping after he assumed the office of the General Secretary of the Chinese Communist Party for the third time. Now, why is this visit of Shehbaz Sharif important? And especially in the context of India, which today has once again uh, through external affairs minister as Jay Shankar in the SCO virtual meeting has pointed out that countries within the SCO framework, that is the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, of which both China and Pakistan are members, should respect the territorial integrity and sovereignty of other countries. This was mentioned because Shehbaz Sharif, while leaving for Beijing, had pointed out that he will be discussing with Xi Jinping or the Chinese side phase two of CPEC. So what is CPEC? CPEC is the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. And what is the objection that India has? This Pakistan-China uh, Economic Corridor passes through Indian territory. It passes through Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. And that is why India has time and again reiterated that this is in violation of India's territorial integrity and sovereignty. And therefore, India has never been on board the Belt and Road Initiative, which is called the BRI. The CPEC is a project under the Belt and Road Initiative. Now, the Belt and Road Initiative itself is a project that is a pet project of Xi Jinping. And he has ensured that he brings around all these countries uh, in the region uh, to accept and be part of this Belt and Road Initiative. India was one of the few countries that had in fact rejected uh, to be part of the Belt and Road Initiative. Just on the eve of the big event that China held uh, when Xi Jinping himself had uh, in fact helped in 2017, India on the eve of that event had said that India will not participate in the Belt and Road Initiative. India's objections were threefold. First, India said that uh, any initiative of this nature under which a project is violating the territorial integrity and sovereignty of the country is a complete no-go for India. Secondly, India said that this project, and India had serious reservations about it, uh, the initiative BRI, because it felt that smaller countries could be caught in a debt trap. And that, in fact, is something that... Uh, has turned out to be pretty much true. Why? And we'll explain to you a bit in depth now. First of all, uh, there are reports now, for instance, a report by the Center for Global Development that has found that there are at least eight countries, uh, in, including Pakistan, in fact, which are at a high risk of debt distress. And many of these are part of Belt and Road. Uh, there is a debt trap that India had warned against many of these smaller countries that were participating in BRI. At that time, 130 countries in 2017 had participated. Now, there are countries like Malaysia that have cancelled uh, two large Chinese projects and largely because uh, of issues of around surrounding the debt trap that many are now uh, realizing that they might get trapped into. Now, the Belt and Road Initiative, then one would ask, why is Pakistan still on board? First of all, Pakistan is still on board because A, it passes through Indian territory of Pakistan occupied Kashmir, which Pakistan anyway wants to take over and uh, wants to create a semblance that it is its own territory. So a project Pakistan passing through POK, uh, it believes it can uh, work in its favor. Secondly, because Pak China provides a shield to Pakistan on one of the very important aspects that is terrorism. Pakistan and its soil harbors terror, terrorists and uh, terrorists specifically from LET, JEM that specifically target India. And we have seen the kind of uh, the kind of shield that China continues to provide uh, Pakistan and these terrorists in the United Nations Security Council being a P5 member. Now, look at some of the recent events and I'll quickly point out to you over the last four months, starting from June, we have seen five attempts by India and the US to move uh, for the listing or sanctioning of terrorists in the United Nations Security Council in the 1267 committee. However, 
we have seen China putting technical blocks one after the other over the last five months. And I'll quickly point out some of the terrorists against whom India and US had moved these uh, uh, sanctioning or listings that uh, were blocked by uh, China. First of all, let's start with June, where China placed a technical hold on a joint move uh, in the UNSC to list lashkar e taybas leader Abdul Rahman Makki. Then in August, Abdul Rauf Azgar, his uh, uh, listing was prevented by Beijing. Again, a technical hold that was put in place by Beijing. Third came in September of Sajid Mir, an LET operative and uh, one who was involved in the 26-11 terror attack as well. He was one of the masterminds. He was guiding the terrorists and India revealed some of those audio clips uh, during a recent meeting of the United Nations Security Council Counter Terror uh, Council Committee meeting that was held in New Delhi. Then comes October. Uh, two successive uh, uh, blockings in October that we saw. First, uh, Shahid Mahmood, again LET leader, and Talha Said, son of Hafiz Said, the 2611 mastermind, and the leader of Lashkar e Taiba. The technical hold, what is the technical hold? Laji, technical hold can last up to six months uh, in a security council as per the security council procedure. And basically what it does is effectively for a very long period of time, it uh, blocks uh, the sanctioning of a terrorist. Sanctioning is important because it puts restrictions on the terrorists, uh, on their bank accounts, on their movements, and therefore a listing in 1267 committee of the United Nations Security Council is important. And that is why this constant effort is made. So you can clearly see that Pakistan, uh, through this friendship with China, which it calls uh, one of the strongest friendships, uh, while China is, uh, putting across CPEC through Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, uh, using Pakistan, violating India's territorial sovereignty and integrity. On the other hand, Pakistan gains two ways out of it. It's getting what it believes is infrastructure, though not in its territory, on someone else's territory, that is India's. And secondly, uh, it is helping uh, Pakistan shield themselves from the international community. But today, at the SCO virtual meeting, uh, S.J. Shankar, the external affairs minister, pointed out that member states should not, in fact, uh, uh, be violating the territorial integrity and sovereignty of another member nation. And secondly, uh, this is not the first time, remember, India has said this. Prime Minister uh, Modi in 2020 had also underlined this at uh, the SCO format itself. Meanwhile, today's uh, a message was important from the external affairs minister because it happened at a time when Sheba Sharif was landing in China and therefore this message to both these members was important at this juncture.